So who wins your vote at the next election? That's what we want to ask. We heard what Mr. Sunak had to say. Here's Keir Starmer explaining why we should vote Labour on July the 4th. That opportunity for change is what this election is about. We offer three reasons why you should change Britain with Labour. One, because we will stop the chaos. Look around our country, the sewage in our rivers, people waiting on trolleys in A&E, crime virtually unpunished, mortgages and food prices through the roof. It's all, every bit of it, a direct result of the Tory chaos in Westminster. Well, let us have a look at the Conservatives and just see how we judge the terrain for the election. And go back to Cameron here, who, of course, won in 2010 and 2015 and then was successful. But although in 2010, won with the Liberal Democrats, didn't have enough on his own. 2016, Theresa May took over. Then you have Boris Johnson in 2019, the famous lettuce 49 days in 2022, and Sunak now <laughs> with the rain. OK, now I want to show you the general election results. So... Two elections for Cameron, 2010, 2015. There they are. We then have Theresa May's election, which she fought just after she took over in 2017. Boris Johnson fought a general election in 2019. Truss wasn't there for long enough. And Sunak's election is 2024. And we'll look at the number of seats they won. So not enough for a majority. Cameron in 2010, 306. Then a majority by promising a Brexit referendum, which from his point of view went wrong, 330. Theresa May says, OK, I can get more. She fails. 317. Bad result. Boris Johnson, extraordinary result in 2019. Really remarkable. Biggest Tory majority since 87. Trust didn't fight an election. And obviously, we're waiting to see what happens with Rishi Sunak. So we've got some numbers there, haven't we? We can kind of conjure with. And I'll show you how, how the system works, just because we need a bit of a refresher. So inside the House of Commons, we have 650 seats in total. So using the maths, to get control, you need half plus one. Half plus one is 326. So 326 gives you an overall majority. Cameron didn't get it in 2010. Theresa May didn't get it in 2017. And the problem for the Conservatives, there are so many problems, frankly. Firstly, SNP in retreat in Scotland gives Labour extra seats. Secondly, Boris Johnson did really well in the North West, North East, etc. with the Red Wall. And Labour may take 30, 40, 50 seats just like that. This is why. 47% to Labour. The to, uh, poll of polls, 27% ahead of the Conservatives. It's unreal. You know, no one's got, seeing parties go into an election like this, we never see. So if you're looking at the seat prediction based on the polls now, and of course it can change, you have the Conservatives from Boris's 365 going to 155. Now, the lowest they've got in recent memory since the war was in 97, when they had 165. So Boris 365, 2019, 97, 165, projection 155. You know, who knows? We've got over here, we've got a ballot box. Look. We thought you could pass your, cast your votes. So if you take a look at the box there. I'm going to show you our voting form. We've got, we're so sophisticated here, right? I can mark this up with your party. Have a little look there. Beth in Essex, where do you want me to put your cross? You've got Conservative, Labour, Lib Dem, Reform, SNP, Plaid Cymru, Sinn Féin, DUP, Alba, Green and Monster Raving Looney Party, Beth. I'm going with Reform. Reform. Yeah. So tell us why. Well, I mean, I think everybody's talking about all your program and on other programs. It's all about Labour and Conservative. Both of them make a mess. None of them can answer a question that you ask them. They go round and round in circles. Yeah. But reform will. You ask them a question, they answer it. Well, where's he stand? Richard, think... Richard Richard Tice is standing. He's a Hartley Paul or something, I think, isn't he standing? We we just I heard. By the so. way, I'm there not, he is. I'm not sure. Beth, I'll tell you something we just heard is that there's been a, a press conference this morning. Farage is not going to stand in a seat. What do you think of that? Well, that's up to him, isn't it, really? I mean, I think he'll still back the party. I think he'll still sort of help. But if he doesn't want to stand, that's up to him. It's not on one man. It's on... It's on who's going to do the best for our country. OK, Beth, thank and you. Patrick, let me just crack on here with other callers. Patrick in London, who are you? Who do you want your cross beside, Patrick? Uh, Patrick, uh, thank you, Jeremy. Good morning. Um, 
It's it's uh, my cause is going to be for some change. Yeah, but at which it's party, Patrick? There's no change uh, party uh, here. Uh, uh, yes, it's going to be Labour. Labour, Patrick. Okay. With, 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 with a heavy heart. With a heavy heart. Tell us why you, you used to be a conservative, Patrick, or what? Um, 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 uh, Jeremy, I've been waiting 19 uh, months for an operation. Oh. Um, this the, 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 this government has let me down, let me down very badly. What's the very operation badly. for, Patrick? Uh, for my back, for my hip. Yeah, well, do you know what? That, that is, you would be cheesed off. Thank you, Patrick. You would be seriously, 18 months in pain. Yeah. That's how you lose an election, yeah, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. And this is, this is always going to... Um, have been an issue for the for the incumbents because public services are not in a fantastic place. This uh, really affected my father-in-law. He, he had to wait and wait and wait. There is no doubt that the NHS, and this is not an argument for privatisation, it's not working. The, the waiting list hit a record 7.75 million. Well, they million. say it's COVID. Mater they may say that. Mater it was bad already. Maternity care is in crisis. Social care is in crisis. Not enough GPs. Mm. That is an election loser because Absolutely. it has a real-life impact on individuals. By the way, the Farage news is very important to respond to. The Tories are terrified of reform, and there might even be an argument to suggest that one of the reasons Sunak went early was not to give Farage the opportunity to take over from Richard Tice. They will be delighted he's not standing in a seat. Thanks for your calls on this so far. Do keep calling. And Before the break, we asked, when was the last time a general election was held in July? We gave you 97, 74, 45. The answer is 1945. It's, it's a strange one, 45, because Winston Churchill, who, who is this hero of the Second World War, lost in 45. And I wonder whether that means Conservatives don't do well in summer elections. Well, I think, I think the, the Scottish Nationalist Party leader, Swinney, I think he's got a, a good point. I think this shows an arrogance on the part of the Conservatives in Westminster. The fact that five million Scots or whatever will be on their summer holidays. The schools are breaking up, will have broken mm. up. And that means that some people will be away and it'll be much harder for them to vote. Yeah. Let's remind you what's still coming on the show. First up, we're taking more of your calls and uh, putting some more of your votes into our, our special programme ballot box. I've got the voting passes here. Put your cross in the box. I'll do it for you. Who are you backing at the general election? 0207 862 And then from election footing to foot etiquette, is it OK to go barefoot on public transport? I'm asking because that there is the left foot of the cabinet minister, Johnny Mercer. Then the papers where we discuss Paul of Venel's tears at the post office inquiries. Normally we'd be leading on that story, but this is very much second order today. At 11.15, Storm joined by actor Jason Watkins for advice on how to spot sepsis. And this is how you get in touch. Thanks to Charlie Brown for helping us out here. 0207 862 is the number. 16p a minute from a landline. Mobile phones may be dearer. Social media is Twitter now X. TikTok, the Facebook, threads, and Instagram, which I'm kind of enjoying, and YouTube as well. You go on YouTube and type Jeremy Vinyl 5, you'll find us. So let's continue with our big question. Who wins your vote? Your vote on July the 4th, 020-7862-2222. And we'll fill out the form, put it in the ballot box. Carol's in Devon. Hi, Carol, are you with a particular party? Hello, Jeremy. Uh, well, I'm not anymore. I was. I am an ex-Liberal Democrat mayor of Torbay. And in fact, I ran at, uh, read out the election result um, in 97, I think it was. Oh, I yeah. see. OK. Yeah. Well, look, come over here, Dem Carol, for a second, because I, I showed some polling here and we should focus on the Lib Dems. Um, right. I, I appreciate that, that. It sounds like you're not with them now, but... They're trailing a bit. I don't know whether their leader, Ed Davies, has been stung by the post office scandal. He's been a bit invisible as a result. But here's what's well, so interesting. I'm just going to say this to you, because you'll have an insight into this. Even on 9%, yeah. if the Conservatives suffer a complete batting collapse, the Lib Dems could go up from 11 seats to 49, and one of them would be Torbay, Carol. Yes, yes, I realise that, yeah. Um, the candidate, the Lib Dem candidate, I've known for oh, many years, and he's a good chap, you know. OK. But I Why actually aren't you a Lib Dem to... anymore, then? Uh, well, I, 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 well, I moved to Suffolk and one thing and the other, and I gave up my party membership, actually. Oh, um, okay. But I want to see, um, I think Ed Davey is due to give uh, evidence or whatever um, before the uh, committee for the horizon scandal 
And I want to see how he comes over on that, because I think that's very important. But can you, even before um, that, can you help me fill out this form on your behalf? We've got all the parties here. You can vote for whoever you want. Just tell me who it is. Oh, God. Oh, all right, then. Lib Dem. The, oh, I right, see. So you're sticking with your, your former party. OK, let's see how he does yeah. at the inquiry. Um, let me ask you, if I can, Selma, to fill it out, just for the sake of procedure. Uh, Conservative. Conservative for Selma. There we go. Matt Stadlin. So I'm going to go Labour, but I will just add this caveat. That go I on. If Labour do win a majority, and it's by no means guaranteed, yeah. I, I, unfortunately, I think it'd be more to do with the unpopularity of the Tories. No, but we're only asking for a one-word answer, my friend. OK, <laughs> work, right, Labour. That's OK. Just forgive me. We don't need the whole analysis here. We're just going to put that in. <laughs> we'll come back to that in a second. We're going to get through more calls. Alan in Edinburgh. Hi. Hi there. Go on. What do you, what do you want to put on your voting slip here, Alan? SNP every time. SNP. Ah, oh, I can't see an SNP every time. I've got SNP, though. That's good. OK, I'll there it is for SNP, you. Then. Yes, uh, tell SNP. us why. I'm always going to vote SNP until we get independence from England, Shire. It seems to be receding, Alan. So they think. I don't what's, think it's what's as bad going as on? people hey, think this. I can't, do you know, I had this weird thing today. I woke up and I couldn't remember why Humza Yousaf resigned. Have you ever had that? Yes. I did. Can you tell me why he resigned, Alan? I just think it, he was going to lose the no confidence vote anyway. Oh, it was so green. That's right. The green. Thing. Yeah, yeah. He, so he fell out with the greens. Satisfaction. That's it. It was a bit technical. Okay, but you think they can still win, do you, Alan? Oh, they're still winning Scotland. Thank you very much, Sally and Surrey. Where do you want to go? I will vote Lib Dem, definitely. Oh, OK. Um, <clears throat> I want to vote tactically, and I wouldn't uh, vote Green if we had a Green candidate in my area, you would but vote um, green. definitely Lib Dem. Um, I, I think it's really important to ensure that the Conservatives don't get back. Um, I think Labour is the most likely option, but Lib Dem is going to satisfy my particular um, belief systems. Matt can and help us. Way, yes. Help me yeah. on this, Matt. No, I think that's really interesting. Well, that call. I'm just going to ask a question. Go on, go on. Sorry, is, is that why is it mm. that the Lib Dems are sort of bumping along mm. and yet they might win 49 seats? What's going on? I think it's because of tactical voting on the so-called progressive left. The Tories, we know, have a real problem, as we've discussed, with reform, terrified of reform. They could shave off the Tory vote, may not get any seats, but do damage to the Conservatives. Whereas on the left, there's such a desire to get rid of the Tories after 14 years that I think Lib Dems will vote Labour if they think the Labour candidate has the best chance of unseating the Tory, and Labour voters might vote Lib Dem right. for similar reasons. I think that we're going to see a lot of tactical votes. Anti-Tory vote, yeah. coalescing or whatever they say. OK, Sally, which constituency are you in, Sally? Sorry, what, sorry? What, what seat are you in? Which uh, constituency? Um, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry, yeah. Guildford. Guildford. Oh, that's so yeah. Tory. That's not... That's going to... Well, hang on, who's that? Surprised. Anne Milton? No, who's no, that? She's no, no, it's... Um... Go on. I can't think of her name off the top of my head now. Sorry, that's... Uh, yeah, 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 but I think... <laughs> If that goes Lib Dem, that will be seriously yeah, bad I th for the I, Yeah, I think Guildford is very much at risk of um, losing on tactical votes. Is it? Is it? Thank you, Sally. Diana in Liverpool. Where I'm going to put Sally's vote in with yours. Where are you going, Diana, for me? I'm going with the Tories. Are you now? I sure am. I'm thinking long term. I don't think people in this country are thinking long term, Jeremy. And I think they just want a quick fix. They just want someone in uh, who's not conservative. And I just think if we go to war tomorrow, Keir Starmer, with all his minions, with his Jeremy Corbyn, cannot take us to war. Honestly, we'd be defeated. We'd be run over by the Middle East to take us over. The whole world would take us over. And if I'm going to war, I want the Americans side by side with me. Uh, can Thanks, I respond Diana. to that, please? May I respond to that very Go quickly? On. Very quickly. Rishi Sunak, yes, they tried to scare us into voting Tory. He was talking about security. You can't trust Labour on that. The British Army, if my stats are correct, 2010, about 107,000 it numbered. Now it numbers in the 70,000s. That's almost like a 30% reduction under these Tories.
Yeah, but you also have to understand that warfare is changing considerably, especially when it comes to the tactics that are deployed by hostile state actors, the way we uh, uh, procure um, defence and armaments. So even though there is definitely a discussion about the size of the army, I don't think it's as cut and dry in the number. But our nuclear like deterrent doesn't regulars. even fire off when we want it to fire off. I it mean, just we've, become a laughing, we've become a laughing stock. It's, you know, it's so funny. When I said, Diana from Liverpool is here, how are you voting? I know this is wrong on my part, but I never thought she'd say conservative. Now, I think Knowsley, I think, has the biggest Labour majority in the country. That's Liverpool. Something like, to memory, is 40,000 or something. So, so that is an interesting call. Stephen is in Chester. Chester's a fascinating seat. Giles Brandreth used to hold it. Is it Labour now, Stephen? Uh, yes, it is, uh, Jeremy. And good morning to you. Um, Where would you go then? Well, that's an interesting one, really, to be quite honest, because mm. personally speaking, I think we need two things. I think we need a change in the voting system, which is proportional representation. That's got to happen. And secondly, I would like to see more independent candidates all over the country who are just going to be elected on local and some national issues mm. to deliver and represent the people. I think this idea of a two-party system, which is still largely the case, and I suspect we'll still continue to Would be you, the so, case. All right, but let me just pin you down. You have got other down here, so I'm, you might be an other at the bottom, I don't know, it's, and that's, that's the guy who, you know, that gets elected and then she campaigns for your local hospital, like the Kidderminster Yeah, possibly, MP. possibly. Do you um, want that, do I, you, or what? Tell me. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah well, other? I'm kind of, kind of a little bit swayed to a possible Conservative vote just Ooh. to stop. Labour getting in. I've got to be honest, I, I am not sure that this, for the first time ever, quite undecided. My reform? viewpoint is... We, reform, no? I don't think so. Um, I don't think uh, they're going to get anywhere. I, I mean, okay. UKIP, they saw 4 million votes with one MP. The, the system is not going to facilitate... OK, thank you, Steve, very much, Steve. That, I'm afraid, is a, is a spoiled paper because I couldn't make sense <laughs> of it. Kath in West Yorkshire, Hello. Hello. Which way are you going, Kath? We can only put one cross in the box, I'm afraid. Reform. Reform again. They're doing well today. Yeah. So why reform? Because they, they always say if you vote reform, you let Labour in, Kath. Yeah, well, no, if you don't vote for a different party, we are going to be stuck with Labour and Conservatives forever. And they don't work for the people. They work for themselves and for foreign countries. OK, that's, that sounds a bit like the other call that we had, foreign countries. Very coming. interesting, these calls on, on tactical voting and, and, and also on proportional representation, because we saw Starmer earlier talking about chaos. And in your graphics, you remember 2015, Jeremy, what did, Ca what did Cameron threaten the country with? A, a coalition of chaos with, with Labour. Mm. What have we had since? In eight years, we've had five Tory prime ministers, we've had six Tory foreign secretaries, we've had seven Tory chancellors and eight Tory home secretaries. OK, we've got, we've got a bit of Sunak this morning. He was on with uh, my friend Nick Ferrari. And this is now, I, I think, quite a big development because he was asked if any flights will go to Rwanda before the election and have a look at the response. Prime Minister, how many flights will take off prior to the election day to Rwanda? Well, Nick, I gave a press conference about this a while ago, went over it in detail. I said the first flight will go in July and yes, then there will be a drumbeat of flights over the summer to build the deterrent. Will the first flight be prior to July the 4th, Prime Minister? No, no, I've said the first flights will go in July. Yes, if I'm well, elected, uh, we will get the flights off. I'll know after, after the election. So there'll be and no the, flights prior to the election? Yeah, but the preparation work has already gone on. OK. As they say, shut the front door. That's interesting. I thought the whole point was they're going to start the flights and everyone's going to decide do we want to keep them going or not. Well, but he, well, what's interesting about it is that um, Keir Starmer has said that he would scrap that scheme. Yeah. So it's a clear, I mean, just talking about it. But it's not, it's, it's between terms. someone scrapping the scheme and the scheme not running anyway. Um, so he, so this is where it's interesting. So he's suggesting that actually, if I, because it was something he just said, if I'm elected, then yeah, so it's, it's, you don't see it that way. I, I'm, I'm burying my head it's in the It's a hand. dividing it, line. Th this is one of the main reasons, if not the driving reason, why Sunak has taken us to the taken it to the country much earlier than most of us thought. Why he do at the moment this year, channel crossings on the small boats are at a record high, higher than in 
this time in 2022. He is desperate to avoid a summer full of headlines that demonstrate that his Rwanda policy, even if a flight were to go off, is not working. Graham's in Glasgow. Graham, which way are you voting? I'm changing my vote from SMP to Alba. Oh, OK, so, so you're, you're going uh, to Salmon's SMP party. Did you change just yeah. while you were hanging on the phone or has it happened in the last few months? Uh, probably last year. And that's because uh, of the SNP chaos, is it? Yeah, I'm not getting a shot at the camper van. But, uh, <laughs> well, the SNP still have me. Yeah, they still have me. Yeah, they still have me. Managed to get any former well, real independence in Scotland. We still can't even borrow money the same as Westminster does to run the country. Yeah, I mean, uh, we don't, we might obviously must get near the, the court case, but yeah, they've got police action. We can't get near that. But I, it's it's been somewhat chaotic. So you're thinking the best chance for independence is Alex Salmond? Anybody that wants independence, since 51% of the country votes for independence, I think we should get up. I think if I was the uh, Albert Party, I'd take a little screenshot. He's going to vote for uh, that other guy. Yep, the other guy. Uh, I can't remember her name. Which other guy is that? Uh, reform, sorry, that's oh, up. Richard Tice. Reform? I can't vote for Reform, sorry, that's my okay, brother. Okay, not to worry. Listen, thank you for that. Paul in Derbyshire, where are you putting your cross? Uh, Labour, 100%. OK. What, what, are you in a Tory seat? You used to be able to a Curry seat, I think. Are you a Tory uh, seat now or not? No, it's, it's Mansfield area, actually. It's uh, Ben Bradley, who's totally useless. Oh. You did put up your, five, your famous five Conservatives, didn't you? I did, Starting yeah. with Cameron, etc. Yeah. All you got off Cameron while you were in was tampon tax and food banks. Well, you got Brexit as well. Yeah, exactly. Well, they did the referendum. Uh, yeah, they had Boris Johnson, who had a famous party on the night that Prince Philip was buried. And anybody, oh, God, uh, they're taking millions out of my workers' pension every week. Oh, because they're taxing you, yeah. No, 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 no. The, the, the miners' pension itself. Oh, I see. They're taking millions every year out of it. Okay. Paul, thank if you very much. Let's just do one more call. Amanda in West Midlands, which way are you voting, Amanda? Reform. Oh, blimey, O'Reilly. I think if we were count, we're not counting these because it's not scientific, but if we were, <laughs> I think you'd end up with a reform majority. So well, I've been Conservative all my life, and there's so much corruption between the Labour and the Conservatives, and the list is endless, and nothing's going to happen to them. So if you listen about reform, they have outstanding ideas. They have so much organised, I think more than people will ever know. OK, Richard well, let's Tice see. wants to go. run the country like a nightclub, one in, one out for immigration. One in, one out, uh, says Matt. Is that what you think? Oh, I think there's a lot more to it than that, than that the meets the eye. Well, that's what he says. Once they, once they decide, they have so much direct and clear action, rather than the rest mumbling and talking twaddle. Okay, Amanda, thanks so much. Thanks for all your calls. Later is the papers.